this is the text platform in Femi, the Nation on Text Matters. Good day. We continue this week on our series on conflict resolution mechanisms available to you as taxpayers where you have conflicts with the Commissioner General. In the first episode, we talked about objections in which you can write an objection to the Commissioner General objecting the assessment that they have raised. Now, they can either agree with you or disagree with you. In the case where they disagree with the objection and then they issue a final decision that they stand by, there's an option to appeal either to the High Court or to the Board of Adjudicators. So when you appeal to the Board of Adjudicators, it has to, it has to be within 60 days from the day in which the Commissioner General has made their decision. And then you'll have to attach a return the notice of assessment and the notice of objection which is what you would have written to the Commissioner General and then the decision of the Commissioner General on the objection, the notice of appeal to the Board of Adjudicators and then a statement setting out the matter in dispute between you as the appellant and the Commissioner General. So basically this will be your head of arguments in the normal day-to-day -day legal language. And all the other issues that we discussed in the first episode will apply. If it is for income tax, um, you should have paid what you had declared. And if it is for VAT, you should have paid what is on the assessment for it to be valid otherwise if that is not in place it means your appeal won't be heard but of course it can always be heard where it is considered that you cannot pay those amounts in the next episode we will discuss what is the next step if you are not happy with the decision of the Board of Adjudicators. Remember from the prevailing securities case, at the Court of Appeal, it was simply thrown out because they had only objected to the assessments and then they didn't get a response to what they had objected and then they wanted to finalize the process at that stage. Now, before I can close, it is also important to mention that though the acts do not mention a time upon which a commissioner should respond to your objection, case law will suggest that a reasonable time be determined. Now, we know that we have 30 to 60 days to object. So a reasonable time will hover around those days. Some can say 60 to 90 days. Some even say 180 days. But generally, best practice even in other countries will be 90 and in terms of the proposed income tax act that is going to be introduced it's going to be 180 days if within 180 days the commissioner general doesn't respond whatever assessment is issued will be treated as the final decision and then you can go ahead and appeal to the next stage so it is important that where you do not get a response currently legal fees and other circumstances appealing 
you force the commissioner general to respond through a, a court of law get a ruling um, from court or simply go to court to declare that what they have given you as an assessment is final because a time would have elapsed and gone beyond the reasonable time that they should have responded to it doesn't matter whether um, they took long because they were attending to other clients that is an administrative issue that should be solved internally so yes there is a remedy available if the commissioner general takes a lot of time in responding to your objections let's meet in the next episode where we will now talk about the last two stages being the high court and the court of appeal hope you enjoyed the episode remember we are available across all your favorite podcast platforms some some podcasts spotify apple podcast and all the others thank you and have a good day Thank <laughs> you.